Uh, next up, we have a djembe uh, drumming performance by Eric Topso of Central African Republic.
What a creative way of showing us the drumming from Central African Republic. That's amazing. Thank you, Eric. Next up, we have an Afro-Cuban Latin jazz musical recital by Miguel de Ama Cortez.
keep forgetting to unmute. Uh, a really musical performance once again. Thank you so much to the group. Uh, next up, we have the Mexican Art Muralism Workshop by Gilda Pontbrion. Uh, she's a Mexican artist based in Ottawa. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Muskan Padia, our other MC for tonight. She will be signing off. Thank you so much, Muskan, for being with us. No, I'm so glad to be a part of this event and big, big thank you to Gypsy. Um, thank you, Muskan, we'll miss you. And, uh, you know, I will be <laughs> flat after the show. <laughs> Anyway, I'll still be let's watching. Come, let's <laughs> let's let's uh, you know let's um, connect soon, right? Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Yeah. good luck you were awesome. Right? Thank I'm you. I'm watching. Okay. I'm there on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Enjoy. Enjoy. One second. We've we've had an incredible lineup of programs. Oh, uh, lovely, lovely, really lovely, really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, friends, to the World Multicultural Festival in Canada 2020. My name is Hilda Pombriant, and I'm a Canadian artist born in Mexico City. I have been painting uh, all my life, but I started painting full-time in 1991. And I have exhibited in countries such as Canada, the United States, the Netherlands, Japan, Korea, Spain, Mexico, and many more. I have received 24 prizes for my work in oil, acrylics, and mixed media, and 10 more prizes for photography and digital art. When Jean Robert Souza asked me to talk about Mexican art, for the Multicultural Festival 2020, my first thought was to talk about Frida Kahlo, who is one of the most recognized female artists in the world. On second thought, I decided to talk about Mexican muralism because it is a multifaceted movement that not only changed Mexican identity, but it also changed the way many artists paint around the world. The first pictorial movement in Latin America that was compromised to break with a European aesthetic concept of art and to give Latin American a symbol of authenticity. This movement had two main goals, one artistic and the other one social-political. During the pre-Columbian times, Mexican artists used to paint murals inside their temples, telling the story of emperors, warriors, priests, etc., etc. Proof of that can be found in the archeological sites in the Yucatan Peninsula, where the Mayas were recording their everyday life, their ceremonies, their deities, their sports, and their food. On the other hand, we can also admire beautiful murals in the archaeological sites of Teotihuacan, where they even use precious stones for the eyes of the people painted on the murals. Although the tradition of telling our stories by painting them on walls existed before the Spaniards conquered Mexico, it was at the beginning of the 20th century that the great movement changed the artistic world forever. The muralist movement was born in Mexico in 1922 from a manifesto written by David Alfaro Siqueiros. It is very important because it transcends the artistic part to become a social and political propaganda talking about the post-revolutionary movement. A group of intellectual painters decided to follow Siqueiros' manifesto. Rivera and Siqueiros started developing the idea of transforming Mexican art coming from a social movement. Art had to reflect Latin American culture. It had to be seen by the general public because it was about people and for the people. Porfirio Diaz's dictatorship ended with the Mexican Revolution and that brought new social expectations which demanded human rights for the indigenous people. Murals became an instrument to promote the ideas of the revolution and reestablish a new frame for the working class. This movement changed not only the perception of Mexican identity, but also helped to find techniques that help artists all over the world. When Álvaro Obregón became president, many changes took place. He hired José Vasconcelos as Minister of Education in 1921, and when he found out that 90% of the population was illiterate, he tried to find a way 
to teach people a simple way to learn. Other changes included 3 million hectares of land were redistributed to peasants. Education was given a boost and a budget was assigned to the arts. Jose Vasconcelos sponsored Dr. Adol Gerardo Murillo, who was considered the father of muralism in Mexico. He founded the Art Center in Mexico, which was looking for the creation of a national style of art using modern principles to express ideas in murals. He invited several young artists, such as Diego Rivera, Roberto Montenegro, Jose Clemente Orozco, Federico Cantú, Ramón Alba, David Alfaro Siqueiros, Rufino Tamayo, Juan O'Gorman, Pablo O'Higgins, and Ernesto Ríos Ochoa. In 1922, this group of artists called Sindicato Revolucionario de Obreros Técnicos y Plásticos was born, and they decided to express their socialist ideas through art and muralism. They also wanted to include craftsmen, wood carvers, and textile workers who were not considered artists. All this made people understand the importance of murals and feel part of this social movement. To inform people about the group, they started publishing a weekly paper called El Machete. In 1923, muralism became well known in Mexico and overseas. The three great ones, David Alfaro Siqueiros, Diego Rivera, and Jose Clemente Orozco, kept on painting using the funds of the Ministry of Education, directed by Jose Vasconcelos, until he was substituted by Jose Manuel Puig, who decided to help only Diego Rivera. Mexican muralists did not approve the classic way to paint bourgeoisie, which included the European ideal of religious scenes, mythology, landscapes, and portraits. Mexican artists were determined to create a completely different school of art. It was then that they decided to include the struggle of classes as their main theme for murals. Since murals had a didactic function telling people about their history and their culture, they stopped being painted inside buildings to be painted on external walls. Therefore, artists were supposed to find new techniques and they developed new paints which were more resistant to external climate conditions. The new acrylic paint was born in Mexico and it was a lot more versatile and resisted climate conditions. This movement not only redefined Mexican identity, but it also changed the way people painted around the world. At the beginning, murals were executed in techniques including fresco, encaustic, tiles, relief. The most initiative artist was David Alfaro Siqueiros, who worked with Piro Ciclin, a commercial lacquer, and he was one of the first ones to use airbrush to paint murals. One of the most famous murals was The Man at the Crossroads, asked to be painted by Nelson Rockefeller in New York City. It was a dispute between Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse, and Diego Rivera. All of them said no to Rockefeller plea due to restrictions about the piece, which included that the mural had to be monochromatic and a piece of decoration. After a few negotiations, Diego Rivera accepted to paint the mural as long as he could use color and have some wording on it. Rivera decided to paint about capitalism versus communism. On one side, technology showing Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution, as well as low-class people being repressed by the high class. On the other side, he painted a socialist world with Frederick Engels, Karl Marx, and Leon Trotsky. The other side had Lenin in the middle, with his hands supported by a Russian and an African-American soldier to represent the unity of the nation. Although Rivera explained his political views to Rockefeller before beginning to paint the mural, Rockefeller asked him to change it once it had been finished. Diego Rivera decided not to change it, and the mural was destroyed. After this incident, Diego was not allowed to paint in the United States anymore, which caused the artistic community in New York to take action. Some abstract expressionists got together to discuss about what had happened regarding politics, freedom of expression, and public art. A year later, Diego Rivera painted the same mural at the Palacio de Bellas Artes in Mexico City. In this mural, he tried to represent communism, the communist movement, as a symbol of hope. This was very representative of Rivera and Trotsky's friendship, who was exiled in Mexico by Stalin's order after Lenin's death. 
The production of public art in Mexico from the 1920s to the 1950s was called Escuela Mexicana de Pintura y Escultura by historians and critics. It is not a school in the strict meaning of the word because it includes several artists from different generations with different styles of paint. We could say that this school is a combination of public and aesthetic ideals. The main characteristics of Mexican muralism are leftist political propaganda, indigenous people considered basis of the creation of modern Mexico and the struggle of classes. Another important aspect was that the muralists considered art not as owned by an elitist minority, but as a benefit for all classes. Although their ideals were similar, their techniques were completely different, and people can tell who painted each mural even without looking at the signature. It is very important to emphasize that Mexican muralism changed how people thought about indigenous people, letting people know about their culture and history. The movement changed the history of the world, not only in Mexico, but worldwide, because they showed relevant social problems and tried to make art accessible to every individual, provoking a social conscience. I hope you enjoyed this little piece about a great, great movement uh, most people know about, but I hope you enjoyed also the pictures of the beautiful murals that we have all over Mexico. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me through my uh, Facebook page, Gilda Pombrian Art, or through my website, www.gildarte.com. Thank you and have a wonderful festival. Bye-bye. Um, thank you so much for the mural art presentation, Gilda. Uh, our next performance is by our Algerian friends here in Canada. So let's hand it over to them.
Sorry, I don't know why. Just mute it again. Okay, thank you so much for the performance um, by our Algerian friends. Let's move on to our next performance, which is a musical one by our Brazilian friends here in Ottawa from the Brinca, uh, Brinca organization. performance by the Brinko organization. I'm sure it was a task to bring all those musicians together, especially virtually and from their homes. Uh, so thank you to them once again. I'd also like to take this opportunity to uh, sign off for this evening as your MC and hand it over to Eric. Uh, and I'd like to thank Mrs. Gypsy Ghosh for giving me the opportunity to be involved with the World Multicultural Festival 2020. So thanks, Gypsy. Thank you for that.
You're welcome. Thank you, Ananya. Thank you. So, Eric, before you start, I have to introduce you in a special way. Give me some time. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Eric is going to entertain you with many things at the same time. He is he is a versatile entertainer. So I have to I have to show you something. Give me some time, right? Ananya, you were awesome. Thank you so much. We'll connect thank soon, you. right? And I'm recording the whole thing. We'll do a nice YouTube. And thank, thank you again. So much. Thank you. We had a lovely time. Looking forward to your MCing, Eric. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. So here comes Eric Tobzo. master of ceremony of the day he is he is something known as wandara tobzor mc wandara eric is a master drummer originally from central african republic he has been drumming over 15 years and he has workshops and school of drumming everyone has seen him with his joy of life in different type of events as he is he is also a master of ceremony a graduate from the University of Ottawa Political Science International Development with specialization in globalization and business administration. He is the owner of Wandara Creation Cam Campaign Artistic and Cultural. I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce French very well. He is a great community organizer, leader, and cultural entrepreneur. Drumming is to empower, empower a human being. He thinks so. With the power of his hands, Wandara Tobzo is an ordinary, joyful artist with special drumming he calls freestyle is a way to liberate your mind, body, and spirit. It's a fusion of singing while playing with a variation of rhythm from one drum. Something magical happens when people join the scene and dance. Drumming for uplifting is his concept and personal development approach. So it is very interactive to create a dynamic social inclusion. So learn drumming for the best master. Always remember the drum is a special instrument in every country in Africa. The first communication technique was made by the drum. The drum makes a call for any type of celebration, be it a birthday, a funeral, or wedding, or all kinds of general gathering. So everyone should be in the present moment, enjoying this authentic positive vibration, which we enjoyed. Before Eric joined, again, we saw a little bit now. Just be happy, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now, Eric Sara Wanderer Topzo. So we have him right now. Welcome, Eric, to World Multicultural Festival Virtual. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So um, I was just wondering if, um, if I, I will be continuing directly with uh, Afro-Cuban Latin, uh, Latin jazz musical recital by Miguel de Amos Cartet. So ladies and gentlemen, please join us. This is the Afro-Cuban Latin jazz musical recital. Oh, we, we already did that. Eric, yeah? you, okay. are, you are starting from Arabic singing by Syrian oh, singer from okay. Canada, 88. So, 
I wanted I wanted to give the same thing more and more and more, but uh, we can move <laughs> on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to the Arabic singing performance by the Syrian singer from from Ottawa here, Muhammad Nasser. Please welcome Muhammad Nasser. Let it have fun. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, we are waiting for Mohammed Nasser from Syria. والسمام غيمة هو عليك الروح محتارة مدني الدمع من العين مدني الدنيا مطارة ذكرتك والسمام غيمة هو عليك روح محتارة ما أدري الدمع من العين ما أدري الدنيا مطارة وينك ما إلك عنوان واسمك ضاع تخبارة هل البحر لو يبعدك عني لسوي القلب عبارة هل جوا الغيم فوق الغيم أنا لجيبك بغير طيارة 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 يا ويلي يا انت حبا غيرنا لا تحب لنا ايش من كان عنا بشرع الهوى حرام الحلو ينهى لك حلو عندك غدر ضيعان الحلا فيك لربي نادرني در يا ربي نادرني در مثل ما قبلتني يا ويلا Thank you very much, Nasser. That was lovely. That was a lovely sound from uh, from from Nasser, uh, Nasser who is from Syria. Let's come back come back to the stage now. We're moving step with uh, a performance. This time it's a folklore. Uh, it's a Latino performance by the uh, folklore ensemble here in Ottawa. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome.
mano en la cintura. Beautiful, that was so lovely. All the skirts and the moves that was from the Latino dance, ladies and gentlemen. And that we are moving now to Japan. I hope that you are sticking with a beautiful vibration. We keep it up, keep the vibration st still up, 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 okay. And then now we are moving to Japan with a workshop that is exactly to show us how to wear a kimono. Kimono. Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to wear kimono. I've been wearing the kimono since I was a child. So I made this video because I want you to know the attractive of it. 
The world of kimono is wonderful and so deep. I hope this video becomes your trigger to interest in Japanese culture. Please enjoy! Okay, it's all done. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I didn't know this will take a whole particular art of wearing the kimono. It's, it's got to be a training special for that. And then you see all the pieces that it is combined one after another just to make it look so beautiful. Uh, well done, well done, a wonderful uh, workshop. Now we are moving to India. Is uh, you know we are moving to India, especially Bengali cuisine workshop on the Hilsa fish curry by uh, Heimanti uh, Bat Batachara Batacharya. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs>
you pronounced it correctly. How could you? It's Ataria, <laughs> yes. yes. This is the, the, the most special fish, and we love this fish. And this yes. is from my this is from my province, and it's called okay. Ilish Mach, Ilish Mach Machet Chol. That is Hilsa Fish Curry. Yes. Okay. So one day you have to come to my place to have Ilish Mach. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is English from my fish, province, eh? friends. Yeah, yes. let's, let's enjoy it. Don't yeah. get hungry. It's very sculptuous. Hi everyone, this is Haimanti. I'm from Kolkata, the eastern part of India. Bengalis are just fond of fish. Today, I will share a fish curry with a very special fish from Bengal and it's called Hilsa. If you want this Hilsa fish in Canada, you can go for any Bangladesh or Indian fish market. So let's come to my kitchen. I'm using three pieces of Hilsa fish. And as a vegetables, I'm using pumpkin and eggplant. I'm also using green chilies. Now coming to the spices, I'm using turmeric, salt, and this is very special spice from India. This is called Kalanji. I'm using grind mustard seeds and grind coriander. As oil, I'm using mustard oil. Now, I'm going to marinate these fishes with turmeric first. So, I'm adding the turmeric and salt. Make sure you are using the both side. Let it be marinated for 10-15 minutes. First, I have to deep fry the fish. So, I added mustard oil and I heated it up. Make sure the oil should be heated very well. Now, let's add the fish. And let it be fried. Let it be fried. Now you can see the fish is ready. So I'm taking it out. to fry the veggies. Make sure you will shallow fry, not too much. So I'm adding pumpkin and ginger or you can say plant. I will add little bit turmeric. By the time the veggies are going, getting ready, I will prepare the spice. So I'm adding a little bit turmeric and coriander. Now I'm taking the mustard. And the 
salt. I'm adding water and making a paste with this. Let's prepare the gravy now. So first I am adding kalanji to the heated oil and then I am adding green chilies. For extra taste I am adding little bit tomato fry it in a medium heat. While you are preparing tomatoes, it's good if you add a little bit salt to it because I have already added the salt to the spice so I am not going to add too much. Now I am adding the spice. The paste that I have made with mustard and coriander, turmeric all together. Also, I have added the salt there. Now you can see the oil has separated so oh, I have cooked it for around 3 minutes. Now I am adding first the veggies and mixing the veggies with the spice. Now I am adding warm water to this gravy. And now I am adding the fish to the gravy. And let it be cooked for 5 to 7 minutes in medium heat. Now the fish is all done and it is absolutely ready to serve. Here you go the Bengal special Hilsa dish. It took around 30 minutes to cook. If you want the recipe again, you can contact through email. My email is swa.theory at gmail.com. Thank you. I'm so hungry. And oh, Havanti, you. you have joined. Why aren't you showing your face? Come on, we are coming. Oh we are coming to throw Derek. Let's plan. Let's oh plan. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't believe all the transformation. Have you seen how the it's it's element of the food is coming to become something and gradually changing, and yeah. then in yeah. the end, 
in the end, I felt like, please just serve me. Please just put it on the table here for me now, you know? Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Oymundi. And you yes. know what? I want to add something here. So this is one of the ways of cooking, but we have several other ways in our okay. own province to cook the same fish. Oh my wow. God. And each one tastes unique. And she has shown just one of them. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you can cook wow. any fish like this and you will get a good taste. You know? Oh my you God. So, can try so amazing. So amazing. Or trout like this. Or kingfish. Yeah. Kingfish. No, uh, the salmon, uh, you know, the, uh, what is it? The, not the filet one. What is it called? Oh my God. I forgot the the exact term, you know, the salmon or the trout, uh, you know, or the kingfish. So okay. you can cook it this way. It'll be very tasty, I can tell you. 